Welcome to the Supplement Engineer Podcast. My name is Robert Shinetsky. Today, we've got a no-holds-barred episode of the podcast featuring the founder and owner of Apollo Nutrition, Mr. Robert Samborski. I'm going to give you a heads up now. If your delicate sensibilities are easily offended, turn off the podcast now. Turn away. Go away. If controversy bugs you, if high stem pre-workouts bug you... Uh, you might want to turn off the episode now. But if you're here for some banter and you want to get the no bullshit, honest answer to anything and everything about Apollo Nutrition and the current state of the supplement industry, then hang around because this is going to be a fun one. So, welcome back, my friend. How are you? Uh, it's been long coming. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it, and always looking forward to you know to just bullshitting with you about various subjects. <laughs> So we, uh, the last time we were together in person was for the Apollo All-Star Seminar back in October. Now, you and I text, I mean, it seems damn near at least every other day, if not every day, about something that goes on. So uh, for the listeners out there, let's uh, give a recap of how was 2019 from a business standpoint? How did, you know, was, did you see growth in the company? Was it slower? What are your expectations for 2020 as well, based on how 2019 went? Well, um... To be perfectly honest, and you know me pretty well by now, I'm never satisfied. I, you know, I, I think that that's a secret to, to success in everything we do. I think if you're satisfied, you become complacent. And uh, I think you should always strive to be better. doesn't matter whether it's business, personal, um, at, as an athlete, it doesn't really matter. But you always should try and be better than before, better than a year ago. Um, the goal was set uh, for 2019, and I think we did better than I expected, which kind of makes me happy, uh, especially considering the state of the industry, which is all over the place right now. You know, companies going out of business. Uh, it, it's just it's it's definitely like a roller coaster, more or less. Um, so we definitely did very well in 2019. I can't say that we did phenomenal. We're not a multi-million dollar business, at least not yet. Um, and, you know, you and I spoke about this. It's not exactly what I strive to be. I just try to go step by step, uh, step by step. And um, I'm looking more for organic growth, word of mouth. I don't want to be one of those supplement companies who are promising everything and then not delivering what they promise um you know we are very transparent but we also very transparent when it comes to marketing so uh 2019 was pretty good better than 2018 by the looks of it seems like we on the right track for 2020 as well excellent um one thing I, i'm curious about with all right so you've got the apollo nutrition supplement brand you also run apollo gym do you notice fluctuations with uh, the amount of foot traffic that you're getting through the gym door, people that are coming up and signing up for the gym and training and, and becoming members there, does that track at all with the growth of the brand or is it just two completely different entities? Um, you know what? Uh, they definitely very much connected. Uh, it became like I would say one brand, so to speak, mm -hmm. even though it's completely different businesses. But uh, to give you an example, when I – took over a pollen gym in 2008 um i think the membership was at around 160 170 180 somewhere around there mm -hmm. it was under 200 members so it was a very slow i would say dying gym mm -hmm. um and then we did i would say we did good because we doubled the membership probably within a matter of a year which again i mean 300 350 is not that of an impressive number when it comes to your average fitness center you know that they have thousands and thousands of members mm -hmm. but you've been to apollo so you know what it's like it's a small gym uh 5000 square feet hardcore um so doubling membership was definitely an accomplishment i tried to go to 500 and I did not succeed for years. I couldn't succeed. I couldn't get close to 500 members. Um, 400, maybe 420. That was our best. Yeah. Once we started the supplement company in uh, 2015, um, within a year, we actually were closer to 1,000 members. And uh, the reason it happened right now, we're actually sitting just under 2,000. I think we're at 1,800. Uh, so it definitely has to do... Well, number one, I do have an incredible team and you've met everybody. Mm -hmm. But number two, I think the supplements helped in essence that 
uh, locally, Apollon Gym was very well respected in with athletes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with a hardcore community. Yeah. But everybody else was very skeptical to come here because they were, uh, I would say, intimidated, intimidated, you know, by the environment. And I, it never hurt my feelings because I could definitely see it. Yeah. Um, but I think that once the supplements took took off and people in the area started stopping by to get supplements from different gyms coming in here and seeing how everybody is very, very friendly, everybody is very much down to earth. Um, they kind of like, oh, okay, you know, I'm at a pond, let me take a daily pass or something like that. Yeah. And they would train here and they would get hooked. And as a result, I think that, um, you know, that, that Apollon Nutrition helped Apollon Gym grow, even though Apollon Gym was here since 75. And, um, you know, and Apollon, Apollon Nutrition just started a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So they definitely go hand in hand together. And I think that they they cannot be separated. So, for example, even though it's two different businesses, I don't think that I would be able to sell Apollon Gym and just keep Apollon Nutrition because it's um, it's not possible. Even though, like I said, it's two different businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, the big news surrounding the, uh, the supplement brand is that y'all just released uh, Anarchy Labs Assassin. So for all the listeners out there that aren't aware yet. I'm sure they know by now, but Anarchy Labs is a sister brand of Apollo Nutrition. Um, and Assassin was the high stim, light your balls on fire pre-workout that y'all, you know, sold out really quickly and because it, the stim junkies love their stuff. And then you told me, you know, on our backdoor conversations we had that you were done with Assassin, you weren't going to run it anymore. And then, you know, it's kind of like Godfather 3. You just, you tried to get out and they keep pulling you back in. So why did you, uh, decide to release a, the new version of Assassin and what took so long to get that to come out? Well, um, you know, since we are transparent and you and I are always honest, so if I'm going to bullshit you right now, you're going to see right through me. So <laughs> let's not do this. Uh, the answer is simple. Uh, money. Money, demand. You know, financial um, financial reward was too, too great to say no. Mm -hmm. But the reason is, is like... Um, I wanted to be done with Assassin. Um, I thought that it was taking a little bit too much of a spotlight from Apollo Nutrition, mm -hmm. which I believe is a better brand, which I believe that's, you know, um, I would say premium on top of premium brand when it comes to supplements for athletes and everybody who wants, uh, you know, full transparency and they want supplements that actually work. Right. Um, I think that Assassin was a little, I wouldn't say it was too extreme because like TJ said in his review recently, you know, you have a freedom to choose what you want to take. Um, however, first DMA, which became illegal, mm -hmm. and then we replaced DMA with DMHA and we did it, I would say, rather successfully. Um, right. But now DMHA came into kind of the illegal territory yeah. and... First of all, my manufacturer did not want to uh, make a product with DMHA, mm -hmm. even though we sold out almost instantly. And I was about to reorder another batch of Assassin last time. And he said to me, you know what? I don't want to risk it. Um, it's not worth it. And we do manufacture, you know, with uh, FDA inspected facilities, CGMP. So legit yeah. companies. It's not made somewhere in a basement and you're well aware of it. So I <laughs> Or have, ABH Pharma. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely get back to that too. But um, you know what? I had no arguments. I was a little bit disappointed because we sold out almost instantly and it was such a huge hit. Right. But I said, you know what? I'm going to reformulate Hooligan. And I did. Mm -hmm. Hooligan, you know, is extremely popular. People love it. I believe it's very, very well balanced. Of course, uh, immediately we got a lot of heat from certain experts regarding uh, the caffeine intake, which... You know, you basically came to my rescue and with uh, scientific proof helped me out to, you know, to shut them up because you're like, listen, guys, six, seven hundred million with caffeine, nothing wrong with it. You don't want it. Don't take it. Simple as that. Nothing illegal. You can't do anything about it. Uh, I'm not breaking the law. Correct. Uh, people, people do love the product. And there is a proof that 700 milligram is definitely not a crime. It doesn't do anything to your blood vessels. It doesn't fuck you up. It doesn't do anything. Right. Um, so Hooligan was received very well. It became a very popular pre-workout. Mm -hmm. um, some even stated, I remember TJ and I believe Review Brothers, they said that they believed it was better than Assassin. Mm -hmm. So 
as a result, it definitely helped with sales. It definitely helped with popularity of the product. Yet, I would say mostly stim junkies and people that had that assassin developed that cult following that mm -hmm. there was no day that I would not get a message. Where the fuck is assassin? Where is assassin? <laughs> Where is assassin? I mean, it was like something that I could not escape. I, I, I felt like like Sylvester Stallone, who just not could not escape Rocky movies and Rambo. Yep. No matter what, people ask for more and more and more. Right. And that's when I remember I, was, I started thinking about it. Like, you know, uh, usually people have hard time selling products. Right. This is not something about selling products. I mean, I saw on eBay, it went for three or $400, which was insane. I remember you so showed me that picture. <laughs> yeah, I was that was pure insanity. In fact, somebody yelled at me, why are we selling it that expensive? I said, like, listen, this is somewhere in Croatia. I have nothing to do with it. You know, so the decision was made to at least look at it if it's possible to make it as good, as powerful as the DMA, DMHA version. Right. And that's when I started fucking around with the formula. And again, I mean, I have to give credit credit due. I was bugging the shit out of you, sending you like various <laughs> formulas, and you would say, "Okay, this is too crazy. This is this. This is that." But I listened. I listened. I listened, and I remember I drove my manufacturer absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. I think I changed the formula a million times. I showed you the formula a million times. Yep. And then finally, when we said, "You know what? Fuck it. Let's do it," I think it went into production. And I added hoarding in a very, very last minute. And I think DMAE, like literally, I, you know, the manufacturer was like, you're driving me insane. <laughs> um, but it, uh, you know, I was very worried. You know, I started testing it, you know, with people that 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 liked the product, that loved Assassin. Mm -hmm. And uh, once I got thumbs up, you know, that they said, well, this feels just like the old one, even though it's a different formula. Right. Um, once it was a go, we said, you know what, let's bring it back. Let's change the label to make it look a little bit more modern, more professional. Yeah. No, I'll let's hold that up. I've got the, the tub of it right here. So everybody at yeah. home that's watching this on video can, uh, see what that looks like right there. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they did a good job with design, I thought. And, um, you know, and basically that's it. You know, it came out only what a day or two ago and it's already a huge hit and, uh, I'm actually, I'm not sure if we're going to last in terms of inventory because we ordered a lot, but it's moving. I think that even not officially released, only like pre-sale and a few stores, mm -hmm. I think that 15 or 20% already gone. That's great. And, that, and that's in a matter of two days. So, you know, we just have to make sure that people understand there is a difference between Assassin and Hole. Again, I think I guess it's our job, and probably I'm going to beg you to help me out to illustrate the difference <laughs> between the two. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm glad we released it. You know, there is demand. I think it's a good product. I think it's a better product than before. Mm -hmm. There is absolutely nothing illegal in it. Uh, you know, it's perfectly fine. Um, and um, let's see what happens. Yeah, and for the, anybody that's curious to see a review on Assassin, I'm going to Strongly recommend everybody go check out TJ at Fitness Deal News' uh, review. I watched it yesterday. He just released it. And I don't I don't give much hype to supplement review channels. We can get to that topic later if you want to. Um, but, but, I mean, it's TJ's review. TJ pulls no punches whatsoever in that uh, in that review. I mean, he's throwing haymakers left and right, whether whether it's about the product, I'm, about it's about people's delicate sensibilities, about caffeine, about everything. Uh, it's, you know, it's an I, excellent I, review. I think that I'm going to, you know, just so there are no misunderstandings or anything like that, not to be accused of anything, I'm just yeah. going to go on record and say this. DJ is a very, very good friend of mine. Yeah. Just like you are, I'm very good friends with Review Brothers. Um, and yet, and this is, well, you know me by now, um, this is honest truth. When we sent the tub to TJ to review, yeah. just like we do with everything, we never paid him. Ever. We never paid review brothers. And, uh, you know, um, it never happened. They never asked for money. He and DJ never asked for money. I mean, I've been to his house. His wife is a great cook. I love Israeli couscous. Um, he's, um, he's a friend. But at the same time, when I sent him the product, um, you can ask Carolina. I was extremely nervous. Mm -hmm. I was very, very nervous because this is a type of product that you don't know how it's going to be received. Right. And, um, I remember he, he. I think he sent me a text message, and all he did was say, "This shit hits you like a train." 
<laughs> so I, I was I was happy because I knew okay I think we nailed it yeah. you know if it hits TJ it's gonna hit anyone right um and when he posted about the fact that he's gonna release a review um I read between the lines because he said something like um it's not what you expect yeah so I was like holy shit is he gonna like destroy this product uh, in a review. But yep. at the same time, I know he liked it. Right. So I knew that there's going to be something different about this particular review. And, you know, it's already very, very controversial. A lot of people sent me messages. Uh, he was definitely pulling no punches. I did not expect it from him. I definitely did not expect it from him. But I think, honestly, I think I did ask him. I did ask him. I said, like, what the fuck? <laughs> he goes to me, I'm just fed up. He says, I'm fed up with all the bullshit, you know, and he says, in fact, he still believes that he was kind of respectful. He says, mm -hmm. and I hope he, uh, he said that he's not pushed to go further, but I think he's just very, very fed up with the whole industry, just the way I am, the way you are, you yeah. know, everybody is fed up with what, what, what's going on. It's just a little bit too much. Um, so he was definitely not holding back. The review came exactly what I thought it would be in terms of his uh, review of the product. Mm -hmm. I think it was very positive. We, you know, um, pretty much what he said, I have absolutely, I, I can't disagree with him. Um, yeah. And, and that's the reason why I like, um, you know, when he reviews the products, because he is honest. If he doesn't like the taste, if he doesn't like, you know, the way the product works, right. and, um, you know, uh, he will say it. And I think mm -hmm. it came out, he definitely came out swinging, and I respect that. Absolutely, and since uh, in support of TJ's review, and I have not tried it yet, I've got half a scoop of Assassin mixed up here, so we're going to do a, a live taste test, because I know oh, TJ shit. said, <laughs> TJ said, he said, well, you know, it's a skin heavy pre-workout, these things aren't supposed to taste the best, he said, it's, it's, it's serviceable, but it's not, it's not the best. So we're, we're going to... Yeah, he called it, he called it drinkable, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that pre-workout's typically delicious. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely better than, oh, it's got a really sweet aftertaste. You know, if, if you're lucky Sandy's not on this call with this, because she would probably go, blah, 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 blah. She, she's going to say I have fucked up taste buds or something. Um, I don't mind it. I, I enjoy it. I could sip on it. I mean, it's half a scoop mixed up in eight ounces of water that's been chilling here for a little while. So it's nice and cold. That makes it better. So I, I like it. And if I start rambling like a madman, then we know why during the podcast. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sip on this because I'm going train upper body after we get off this call. Oh, okay. So we yeah, will... Uh, def I, I definitely think it's an improvement from... Well, it wasn't that hard to improve what we had last time. Yeah. Because that was absolutely atrocious. Yet still people liked it. But I think, yeah, it's definitely better. Yeah, it's got a little of that stimmy taste to it. But it's, I mean, for, as far as stimulants in here, you've got uh, two... And this is going to be just being a half scoop. So 250 caffeine anhydrous, 250 beta phenylethylamine, so beta PEA, 150 of phenethyl dimethylamine, which is the, the really ass-kicking alkaloid from Ereodrensis. You've also got uh, 150 milligrams of teacrine, 40%, which is going to yield 60 milligrams of teacrine, 30 milligrams of isopropyl norsinephrine, 68 milligrams of dicaffeine malate, malate which is going to give you another 50 milligrams of caffeine, 25 of hordenine, and 1.25 of... Uh, we're all seeing ninety percent, so alpha yohimbine, so around one to one point one two or somewhere around there milligrams of alpha yo per half scoop. So, which, which is half scoop? I mean, in reality, it's yeah. in some cases more than full scoop of many other pre workouts. Yeah, that's so. It's still it will it will still get the job done. Yeah, it's a big payload of stimulants, and I don't see myself ever needing to go to a full scoop of this. I'm uh. I'm tempted to send Justin over at Supplement Snoop a couple of scoops of this and see what happens if he I would takes like a to see him after that. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's about a half a scoop to a three-quarter scoop. I, I think full scoop for me is a lot, but I do yeah. know some freaks who will take it. Yeah. Now, since this has, a, you would almost say, like a, a cult following with it, do you do the people that buy Assassin, do you think that they also buy Hooligan too and they kind of bounce back and forth between the two, or do you think that your consumers... There's either like the hardcore hooligan people that only want caffeine as their stimulant or and then you have the assassin crew, which wants anything and everything to light their face on fire. I think that they, there's definitely a division. There are some people who actually cycle them. They go from one to another one. Mm -hmm. But I would say the bodybuilding community is more of a hooligan uh, customers. And I think this one is more popular with stim junkies with um, 
powerlifters with strong men, mm -hmm. um, people that need to be a little bit more focused on their pre on their workout and right. they want that craziness because you know, um, again, going back to TJ, he said it's a an angry, aggressive pre workout. Yeah, I think it is. I mean, I think that Alpha Yohimbi definitely and Isoprop definitely will give you that aggression in a gym, right? So I, I would I take it like you know what um, as um, you know social life? No, you know <laughs> even though I know I, I know people some people who do. Yeah, they will take it like going out. I think overtime is more suited for that. Um, yeah. But uh, in terms of like to be again, I hate that actually word angry and to be mm -hmm. let's let's say focused and let's say aggressive in a gym. Right. Then I think it's perfect. Yeah, and that that's there's certain days when I'm hitting the gym that I. I have certain pre-workouts in my cabinet that are like the, I need to go in there and just destroy things because I, I want to have that kind of angry, pissed off, aggressive vibe to it. Um, and there's other ones where I'm already in a good mood. I don't want to really be pissed off or anything during the workout. It's just more of like a, a grease the groove kind of workout where you're working on technique or it's it's a lighter, you know, more blood flow. I, and I totally there, agree with thing. you. I, I agree with you 100% because most of the time if I train uh, endurance or Muay Thai, I will take Kumite. I think it's fine for me. Right. Maybe I'll sprinkle it with a little bit of overtime, like half a dose. Yeah. Um, but that's it. If I'm lifting weight, say, for pump, I will go either with Hooligan or Hooligan Bare Knuckle. depends how I feel. Mm -hmm. um, maybe if I need like a good leg workout or something really crazy and I feel lazy or a little bit, uh, you know, unmotivated, Mm -hmm. then I'll probably go with assassin. I also think that cycling like that keeps my receptors fresh and my body does not get used to it because let's face it, um, if you take assassin every day for the next, I don't know, two or three weeks, sooner or later your body will adapt to it and you won't get the effects. Right. And it just, that's the way it is. So I think cycling it, or maybe sometimes not using a pre-workout at all is the way to go. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you consume any other caffeine during the day outside of your scoop of, pre-workout whether it be assassin hooligan or overtime uh that's a good question um i typically will have at least one to two cups of coffee per day mm -hmm. or or maybe tea so I, I guess there is some caffeine but nothing outrageous and we're talking coffee is it like a normal size coffee or is it one of those like Super triple venti mocha frappa crappa thing. No, 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 like no. I, I don't go extreme. I actually think that I, I actually enjoy the taste more than anything. I don't think it does anything for me. Yeah. Um, it's not that I'm, you know, used to caffeine or, or something like that, because there are days where I literally go without anything. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I won't take any pre workout. Just I feel like if I don't need it, I don't need it. You know, um, yeah. I, I take religiously kumite when I do boxing or kickboxing, mm -hmm. but that only is four times a week. So that's it. And Kumite has only 200 milligrams of caffeine, so it's really harmless. Gotcha. Um, what's You said Assassin has been received pretty well for the most part. Has there been any negative kickback, I guess, either from other brands that have released high stim pre-workouts or any other entities that, outside of the usual players that are uh, casting stones about high stim pre-workouts? I think last time, which was about a year ago, uh, both Hooligan and Assassin got some heavy, heavy, heavy heat. Mm -hmm. But I think after, again, after we released it and after your articles and after all the proof and everything else, mm -hmm. I think those critics just decided to shut the fuck up because they look kind of stupid. Um, you know, it was criticism that came out of nowhere. And, you know, even as... Um, as recent as a few weeks ago, I remember some um, manufacturer, some, uh, manufacturer, I mean, some um, some company released advertising, oh, do not take uh, caffeine, we have stem-free product, because caffeine is bad for you, you know, for your vessels, and for this, and for, for that. I mean, total, total bullshit. But was it directed at us? Maybe, I don't know, because most of the time it is directed at us. Right. You know, just nobody has the balls to you know, to come up and say like, look, Apollon sucks or this and that, yeah. they will just throw a little hints and, and that's about it. Especially when they see me at the Olympia or something like that, they either turn away or run away. <laughs> you know, they don't, don't, they don't say anything to me or, or they just say how much they love me. And then behind my back, they say something stupid. So I'm kind of used to it. This time around, actually, there was no criticism at all, at least not yet, because it's still so fresh. Mm -hmm. But I totally expect that there's going to be... Um, I think some backlash, especially with DJ's review and, you know, and after yeah. this comes out, I'm pretty sure that something will come out of it. Yeah. Um, there were actually Sharif, who you met at the gym. Yeah, um, Sharif's awesome. He, he, wor 
Yeah, he told me that somebody visited upon, uh, I'm not going to name the name of the company um, for now. Um, somebody visited, some ambassadors came from another company to train at a palm, which is very, very strange. And they said that they want to check a pre-workout. So I know for a fact that company supplies, and you probably already know who I'm talking about, they supply with shitload of products. Their ambassadors are fully loaded with the products. Um, so they looked at the tool again and they said that it's bad for you. It's not a good pre-workout. So he said, well, I can offer you hooligan bare knuckle, which is caffeine free. Right. You know, just a pump formula. Yeah. So they looked at that and they said, well, this has nothing in it. Uh, so that's, I, I don't even know if it's a backlash. To me, it just sounds more stupid than anything. It it's sounds like an uneducated, so, uh, it's uneducated brand affiliate. <laughs> you can, you, yeah, you cannot, you cannot really get offended by stupidity. I think if you're offended by stupidity, that kind of questions your intelligence too. Right. So I think that I kind of like smiled and, and that's it. In fact, I thought it was a great compliment, so to speak. Yeah. So there was no backlash, but I fully expect it. Right. It's just um, very chill about it, like very, very calm. And mm -hmm. again, thank you, because I think that uh, your caffeine um, article mm -hmm. uh, and kind of like clearing the, the air about it, yeah. I think helped a lot. And then, of course, you know, <laughs> we got to thank Nick. Because Nick yeah. came a few weeks ago, absolutely guns blazing. That guy is such an incredible friend. I mean, he yeah. always comes to support me. And, um, you know, just like Burton from Iron Brothers, mm -hmm. uh, who is an absolutely great guy. Yeah. And I have so much respect for those people because, you know, that just shows that, you know, few few of our conversations that you and I had, I said, I hate people in this industry. So I guess, you know, I was wrong because not everybody is a scumbag. Yeah. I still will say majority. <laughs> vast majority but not everybody so there are some good people who came to my defense mm -hmm. and literally had my back and didn't go into arguments they actually presented them with facts right and uh you know once you present somebody with facts and scientific data and uh, you know um it i think that it that it doesn't change people's mind but it definitely shuts them up especially the haters because let's face it uh, the hate comes typically not from knowledge it comes from jealousy and the and just pure hatred for a person that, you know, you dislike. And sometimes yeah. they cannot contain themselves. So it comes out, you know, on social media and everywhere else. And then they look dumb because there is no base for that hate. Well put. Well put. And I would say to cap it off, for those people worried about uh, vasoconstriction of, of stimulants or whatnot, they do make pump formulas that can be stacked with these stimulant products to where you'll get an evening out effect and it will counteract the vasoconstriction of, of whatever potential other whatever potential vasoconstrictive effects could be had from the other stimulants not saying caffeine will caffeine constricts blood vessels in the brain not in the uh, vascular network that's going to your biceps quads glutes all that caffeine acts as a vasodilator in those endothelial cells in the brain it's a vasoconstrictor. That's why it's included in migraine medicine. Um, but, you know, if you take a bunch of citrulline or nitrates or, oh, can't say nitrates. I don't need Ron Kramer on my ass. Hold on. Say you'll take citrulline, <laughs> vaso-6, nitrosogene, you know, agmatine, all these other things that support vasodilation and blood flow. Put those with that. I mean, you, I, I, I don't think the human body is that sensitive to where you're going to freak out and it, your body's just going to shut off the blood flow to all of your extremities and you're going to die. I don't think it's – human physiology is not that delicate. We've been engineered to survive damn near everything. Like, like I said, and this is precisely the reason why I think that even though the hate and uh, criticism and stupidity will still come through, yeah. I think it's going to be a lot less than last time mm -hmm. just because of statements like you just made. Yeah. And c caffeine research continues to come out. I mean, I sent you the study a while back that they did female judo athletes. They gave them nine milligrams per kilogram, which, you know, for if you're translating that to a hundred pound or hundred kilogram male, that's nine hundred milligrams of caffeine at you know and one acute setting. And so they had a minor transient increase in heart rate, but there were no adverse effects afterwards. Outside, maybe feeling a little jittery on an edge. There was nothing horrendous that happened. Their improvements actually was a dose dependent response. So. Three milligrams and nine milligrams were better than one milligram per kilogram of body weight of caffeine intake. So it's there is a dose dependent response with this. And the people that were habituated to taking caffeine, they didn't experience any of this vasoconstrictive actions or the and any kind of increase in blood pressure, adverse effects, or anything like that. They had better performance and their recovery afterwards was just as well too. Even though they took this 
egregious, you know, quote unquote, egregious amount of caffeine. And let's face it. I mean, the, the main heat that I got was because actually there were numbers. I was stating numbers like, look, we have 600 milligram of caffeine or look, we have 700 milligram of caffeine. Yeah. But we know both of us, you and I, we both know that I'm not exactly the leader when it comes to caffeine because there are companies who are using prop plants who are using over a thousand milligram of caffeine and nobody even knows. In fact, people are walking around saying, oh, this shit is good. No, your shit is crap. All it has caffeine, which you obviously feel, but there exactly. is nothing else in it. Right. You know, there, there's a prop blend right now that is selling for $70 that when I looked at the, at, at the ingredients, it has like a scoop of five or six grams or something like that. It has nothing. It has absolutely nothing in it. You know, so out of those five, six, you can easily put a gram or two of caffeine and you will feel it. I mean, you will feel it. And oh, yeah. how much does it cost? It costs nothing. Yeah, it costs exactly. nothing. It literally costs a couple of cents, and that's it. People take it like, oh, this shit is good. Uh, it provides no pump. It provides no focus. All it does is just fucks you up with cheap stimulants, and that's it. You know, it's basically like, I don't know, it's crack. That's all it is. Yeah. So I'm not exactly the leader or the champion. I'm the only one who had the guts <sighs> to actually put it on the label and say, like, listen, this is how much we have. Right. But at the same time, I opened the label, and I said the same as uh, TJ said. You don't want to take it. Don't take it. Like, for example, I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink alcohol at all. Yeah. In fact, I tried alcohol first time when I was 25. Uh, and, you know, people were making fun of me. I would be in a company of, of friends mm -hmm. and everybody would get hammered and drink and, and God knows what else. Yeah. And I wouldn't touch it. You know, I would sip on my Diet Coke. It was my choice. Right. I never judged anyone who drinks smokes doesn't say uh it doesn't mean that i like it not necessarily they smell like shit they, they yeah. get stupid and stuff but it's yeah. not my thing yet you're over the age of 21 uh you're an adult right what you do is up to you you know just like you know if there is a pre-workout that has three or four hundred milligram of caffeine i cannot stop you from taking three or four scoops correct i can't you know you can take three or four scoops um, you can do whatever the fuck you want. You can take two scoops of hooligan. There is nothing I can do to stop you from that. Right. You know, that, that is up to you. You're an adult. You make your own choices. If you want to buy a prop blend that somebody makes, you know, uh, somebody sells for $70 and makes a profit of probably $69, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. That's your choice. You're an idiot in my book, but it's your choice. You know, I'm showing you a label that is... Uh, you know, fully transparent. I put my heart and soul into it. I, uh, I definitely don't try to save money. I make sure that it's, um, you know, it's fully transparent and it's fully loaded with dosages that gonna benefit you with your performance. But it is up to you what you want to use, how much you want to use. There is nothing I can do. You know, there are people who are coming to the gym and they're taking four scoops of protein, which is a hundred <laughs> grams of protein in a shake. Why? Well, because I want to be like Jay Cutler. Okay, I mean, that's your choice. <laughs> you want to fuck up your kidneys or God knows what else? You know, more is not better. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we had this conversation, you and I, and I, I picked your brain constantly. How much you think citrulline? How much this? How much that? What is the effective dose? Because yeah. I don't want to underdose products. I don't, you know, and that's the reason why we didn't release Assassin for so long. Because I wanted to make, I wanted to make sure that we live up to our reputation, reputation of the company that provides quality supplements. And while we are not exactly very conservative when it comes to stimulants, mm -hmm. at the same time, I don't think we are outrageous either. I, I really don't think so. Yeah. I think if we put over a thousand milligram of caffeine, then we probably, you know, getting to that level. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I know for a fact that there are companies who are doing it. They're just putting in a problem. Exactly. And you, you're actually telling the consumers, hey, this is how much we have in here. You're giving them the option. They know exactly what they're signing up for. And they don't have, nobody said you had to take the full scoop either. If, you know, regular hooligan has 600 milligrams per scoop. I've never used a full scoop ever of it. I use, you know, a half to a third, depending on the day. And then I'll stack it with bare knuckle if I want to, or I'll take it with, with some other non stem pump pre work that I have. It just, it depends. Some days you need a little bit more caffeine, some days you don't. Yesterday I took you know, two thirds of a uh, serving of overtime because I'd slept like shit the night before today. I slept great last night. So it, it just, it all depends. You know, on, on the weekend, I really don't take any pre-workouts and I may have one cup of coffee in the morning, 
before I do some work, but after that, it's it's nothing. It's give people the option to, but you're not forcing them to, and you're giving them access to the information on how much they are allowed to take and how much they can take if they choose to do so. And I never lie to people. Like, you know, if somebody would ask me right now, what are you taking right now on a daily basis? Yeah. Out of all the pollen products, I'm definitely taking protein one or two shakes per day. Yeah. I do enjoy drinking chains also. I drink it throughout the day because I hate water and it provides me with BCA, glutamine, and electrolytes. So I like it. I like the taste. I like what it does. Mm -hmm. uh, during workout, I will drink Enigma. I think it's a great intro workout. I enjoy it. I do feel better when I take it. Yeah. Um, and as for pre-workout, it's on a need-only basis. Yeah. I don't take any fat burners right now, so I don't take carrots. just don't need it. Mm -hmm. So why would I lie and say like, oh, you know, I'm taking it religiously? Because I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't need to take it. I don't take it. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm dieting or something like that, I will, uh, I'm very carb sensitive, so I'll limit my carb intake. Mm -hmm. I will take probably something like cluster bomb only post-workout with my shake. But I will be yeah. very, very cautious. So I'm not going to take. I'm not going to take it on a daily basis because if I don't need it, I don't need it. Mm -hmm. So I don't take every supplement that we make, mm -hmm. or I will take it. You know, depends on the season and depends where my body is and what I need to do with it. Yeah. So I'm not going to lie to you. So I'm very, very transparent not only with what products we make, but also what I do. I'm very. I don't want. I have a. And any of the athletes that we work with or worked with will attest to it. I don't want you to promote products of a pond that you do not use. I don't, because I'm sick and tired of seeing all these athletes saying, oh, you know what, this is the best company. Shut the fuck up. You've been with seven companies, and with, with everybody, it's like you have a fucking script. Yeah. You know, you're saying exactly the same thing. This is proprietary blind garbage, best company ever, best tasting protein, best this, best that. Okay, right. no problem. You're fired, now you're with another company, and you're saying identical the same shit. Yeah. I think that the... There is a moral responsibility mm -hmm. not to lie. Maybe I'm being a little bit naive, and I, I, will, I, will, I will gladly admit to it. I don't have a problem saying that I'm naive, and I, don't even, I wouldn't even get offended if somebody else called me naive because they would say money is money. It's not about just money. You do have moral responsibility, and in fact, after you've been with four or five companies and you cycle them and everybody is the best company and the only company you've ever used, do you really think that people are that stupid? To believe you each and every time, because in my opinion, your credibility goes down. Yep. You you're not to be trusted. I I know of a pro bodybuilder who sometimes comes to a pond, uses a pond products, mm -hmm. and promotes other brands. If that was my athlete, that athlete has no place on my team. Plain and simple, because yeah. I do work very, very, very hard to make quality product. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, same goes for review channels, because I know we're going to touch up on that, because this is not a subject that we can avoid, because you know how much I hate review channels. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely despise most of them, and the reason is because they fucking lie. You're a sponsored channel, you're getting paid to lie. You're promoting a brand that is garbage, you're promoting a brand that is good, yet both of them are good in your book. Why? Because you got paid. You know, we don't have to probably name any of them, although I want to put up a warning. If anyone comes guns blazing at me for what I'm about to say, I will definitely retaliate. 100%. I will definitely retaliate. I will not hold back. Because the thing is, is that be careful when you start something. Be very, very careful. And you have to answer for your fuck-ups. So shut the fuck up. I will say what I'm about to say, and it's going to be a general approach. But I'm sorry, when you give an award for best tasting protein or, or the new brand of the year or something like that, and that brand sponsors you, pays you, that's your credibility out of, out of the window. I'm sorry, you cannot do that. Yeah. You can't do that. You know, there was, a, there was a brand that got best tasting protein about a year or two ago. Immediately when it happened, and I know for a fact, and you and I discussed that, it was paid for. Immediately, we made a little tile that we actually put up, and I said, okay, let's do a blind taste. Let's do it. Yeah. You know, I'll put my Apollo Nutrition products, specifically protein, which you've tried yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I will, will go to any gym, any supplement store, and let's do a live te uh, test. Yeah. Live. Because why am I so confident? I'm confident for a simple reason, because before our products are manufactured, 
I take it to members of my gym, 50, 100, doesn't matter how many. And until it's overwhelmingly, fuck yeah, this tastes amazing, we're not making it. Right. We're not making it. So it's not like I'm sitting in my office and somebody uh, brings me different samples and I go like, this is good to go. This is shit. No, it's not up to me. We're making products for consumer. I know that the quality is there. But at the same time, it's the consumer who has to make a choice. You know, a vote for us. There are companies who are actually giving prizes and awards for people to people for voting for them. That's insane. Right. That's insane. So you're openly bribing people to vote for you. So it's not based on taste. It's based on you giving freebies, giving bribes, supplying yeah. them with annual supply of garbage or whatever it is just because you want them to vote. Is that fair? Yeah, it's a popularity okay. contest. It's not an actual uh, mark of the quality or the taste of the products or the effectiveness or whatever. It's a, it's a popularity contest to see which brand can get all of their followers to go and vote in for whatever else or turn in their, you know, click the buttons and do whatever else. Pe pe people, people send me requests all the time to review products, and I'm very, very conservative. I mean, they can pick it up at the store and they can review it. There is nothing I can do to stop them from right. that. Yeah. I mean, they can do it. It's no issue. But do I send the product to everybody? No, I don't. And yeah. there is a reason for that. When I do send a product for review, I'm very confident in my product because I know what's on the label is inside the product. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, I will consult everybody I can that it has any, you know, credible reputation. And, you know, obviously I'm talking about you too because <laughs> – how many times I've sent you products to try? How many yeah. times did I send you formulas to have a look at it? You never charged right. me a dime, and you and I both know it's the truth. You yeah. know, yeah. do I send you a product sometimes for free? Yes, I do. Yeah. Why? Because you're my friend, and I'm not even denying it, and neither will you. And um, what did I say in the last text message? I said, would you like something? You told me, yeah. I think, chocolate protein or something like that. Yeah. What did I say in my reply? I said, I'm honored. I'm honored that my friend actually likes my product. Yeah. Likes it. That, that that means the world to me. That means the world to me. I'm not going to deny it. Is yeah. that a bribe? Bribe for what? Bribe right. for, for you to have a look at my formula? Bribe for you and I text each other bullshit on the, almost on a daily basis, <laughs> gossip and, and calling people idiots? No. It's just two friends. Two friends. And we do shit for each other. Why? Because yeah. we are friends. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like when I have to pay you to lie, well, that's a whole different aspect. That's a whole different aspect. And when, when companies like openly like, oh, this is a brand of the year. Uh, okay, yeah, of course they're brand of the year because you're fucking publishing about them nonstop, nonstop. Yeah. And then you try off one of the product and it's like, uh, really? This tastes good? Because that does not taste good. Yeah. So you openly line. You openly line. If you're a reviewer, review every product. Review yeah. every fucking product. You know, this is good. I don't care so much about the taste when the reviewer uh, talks about taste because, mm -hmm. come on, shut the fuck up. You're only one person. It's highly just subjective, say, yeah. Yeah, just say it's subjective. That's what I think. This is my opinion. But yeah. you should not be judging jury when it comes to test, you know, specifically with flavor and, and taste right. because there should be more people. There should be a vote. You right. know, there should be a vote and it should be overwhelming. Yeah. But when it comes to label, uh, ingredients, uh, dosages yes absolutely talk about it right you know if you're saying proprietary blends are okay because it's a secret formula you're full of shit <laughs> you're full of shit you're fucking lying that's what you're doing essentially what you're doing is you're lying you know and you're saying uh, uh you know we're fighting for the industry you're not fighting for the fucking industry you're fighting for your pocket that's all you do you want to get rich you want i mean rich you want to make money you want to make money that's what you're doing you know what happened? What happened? Uh, what just happened with ABH? Mm -hmm. There are certain people who went on a rampage, destroying every company that manufactured with them. I didn't manufacture with them, but I know at least of a couple of friends that did. Yeah, and they got fucking crucified for running maybe one batch with a company. They got cheated too. They are victims. Correct. And you're taking that opportunity to talk shit about them. And that, oh, my products are great, but these products are shit. You know, they don't manufacture. I manufacture a product with about five or six companies. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I can definitely tell you, each company had a loophole. Each and every company, there was something wrong. Yeah. Yeah. It's your job to monitor the process. Why am I so calm right now? At the same time, the two companies we're manufacturing with right now, we just got into Russia. We got mm -hmm. official Russian certificates. We're allowed to sell in Russia. Congrats. In last, 
in last few years, maybe a decade, yeah. nobody got into Russia. Nobody. The only American f- companies that are legally selling in Russia, as far as I know, are BSN, mm-hmm. Optimum Nutrition, and I think Universal Nutrition. Those companies are there legally. Everybody else, just like we did, smuggles the product illegally. They bring it to people who are who know you know, who bribe customs and stuff like that. They bring it into Russia. They selling it illegally. But to actually bring the products legally to Russia and sell officially. We are the first one in years. And our manufacturer, well, here it is. We have to actually get, I don't, I, I don't remember, either five or 10 pounds of each product to send to Russia for them to test it. And they gave us a warning. If it's off by at least 2%, you're out. They tested each and every one of our products. The only difference was, like, for example, Hooligan is a little too strong for Russia, so the caffeine yeah. allowance is 200 milligrams. So mm-hmm. we had to kind of like bring it down a tad because yeah. those are the laws. So every product that our manufacturer manufactured for Russia, each mm-hmm. and every product passed. So why would I be upset with my manufacturer? I'm not. Yeah. I have nothing to hide. But at the same time, you know, I was obligated to check. Mm-hmm. You know, my manufacturer didn't even know what I'm uh, asking the product for. He could have cheated me, but he didn't. Right. He didn't. So it was legit. But at the same time, there are companies who are, you know, who got affected with what happened, mm-hmm. but it's not their fault. These companies, the owners of the company, they have families, they have kids, you know, they depend yeah. on this and they got screwed and now they looked upon as criminals for what? Who's who's doing best for the industry? Nobody. Yeah. By, by, by basically backstabbing each other, that's how you want to help the industry? That's not a, it's just, you know, ABH, whatever they did, obviously is wrong. No questions about Correct. it. Yeah. There are some companies who manufacture with them. I'm pretty sure that they also not exactly very honest. I don't know which ones because, I mean, I want, I, to be honest with you, I didn't even know about ABH in existence. They, yeah. they hit right here in New York and I didn't even know about them. Right. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm just, I don't know. Yeah. You know, but I know for a fact, I actually talked to the owner of one company who got affected by it. And then, you know, people going on a rampage and saying like, oh, you should be manufacturing your own products. Why? Says who? Says since when, uh, since when I have to manufacture my own products? I don't have to. I have to try my best to make sure that my product is quality product. I definitely have to have some sort of control. Third party testing is a great thing to have. Absolutely, no doubt of no no doubt about it. You know, certifications, GMP, NSF. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Uh, consumer's choice, that's great. Yeah, That's great. That's great to have. Yes, it costs money, but it's a precaution. Right. But honestly, for people that got affected by it, I feel sorry for them. Mm-hmm. I, I feel sorry for them. I feel for them. You know, anyone could be in their position. You know, uh, it's just not the way to do it. And we cannot say that it's for the, be- uh, for the better of the industry. No, we didn't do it for the better of the industry. Criticizing those companies, seven, eight hundred, or wh- whatever the number is, yeah. is not helping the industry. Fighting corruption, yes, that's helping the industry. Yeah. You know, maybe having meetings and helping each other, you know, uh, avoid these things, yeah. maybe that helps the industry. You know, talking about it openly, you know, people be careful who manufactures your products, that's helping the industry. Correct. The fact that there are products right now sold and it says on them for research purposes only, Containing illegal substances and they all over the fucking, uh, you know, stores because stores are paying peanuts for them and then reselling them at three, four hundred percent profit. That that's that's fucked up. Yeah. But nobody talks about it. You know, I just got, the, yeah. you know, I showed you I showed you a message that I got from one of those research companies. Uh-huh. They asked me to sell it at a pound. They have absolutely no shame. They, they're the real criminals because do they yeah. put DMA in a product? I don't know. They, they definitely not manufactured in the FDA inspected facility. They definitely not inspected, uh, inspected by, they don't have a GMP stamp on them. Correct. But nobody fucking checks and nobody talks about it, that it's criminal. In fact, I know also people that ended up in the hospital in the last couple of weeks using those products. Using those products. Why? Because we yeah. don't know what's in them. Yeah. We, we don't know what's in them. That's who we should be fighting. Why? Because those fuckers are taking away from our profits. Those fuckers are definitely, you know, making the industry look bad. You know, that's where the FDA should definitely take notice and go and raid those places. You know, because you make I tried actually calling one of the numbers 
round the companies, I will tell you when we get off air. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Guess what? Nobody picked up. I just surprise, wanted to surprise. Sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, nobody picked up. There is no office. There is nothing like that. Yeah. Those are the people we should be fighting because when you make an honest product, and there are companies who are making honest products, no doubt about it. Yeah. I will never say bad, uh, anything bad in terms of products. Uh, companies like Caged Muscle, you know, Jim mm-hmm. Stepani, I don't like him, but he makes good products. He yeah. makes fairly decent products. I mean, I have nothing against him. Don't like the person, though. Yeah. You know, um, Nutribio does make good products. Mm-hmm. You know, but nobody should be judge and jury. Nobody fucking died and made you in charge of the industry telling us what to do. Right. Just like just like TJ said, we take whatever we want, we do whatever we want. If we want to fight, let's fight the criminals who are stealing from us. Let's fight the criminals who are actually willingly putting garbage on the shelves at the stores, and then the stores tell you, Well, you know what, we don't have shelf space for you. So you don't have shelf space for a good company. That's going to make you look good that you can actually say, you know why? Because you don't give a fuck. Correct. All you give a fuck about profits. And somebody brings you a product with DMAA, DMHA, uh, caffeine that costs, I don't know what, five bucks to make? If that. And they're selling, and, and, and they selling it to you for 15, 20 bucks. They're making three, four times how much they spent on the product. Yeah. And you're putting it on your shelf for 50, 60 dollars. Yeah, why would you carry an honest brand? And you yeah. have absolutely no shame. No shame. You will do it. Yeah. Why? Because it makes you rich. Mm-hmm. So you're trying to fight who? You're trying to fight companies who manufacture with ABH? Why Why are you fighting them? They're already down. They already yeah. got kicked in the balls. They already have to pull their products from Amazon and God knows where else. Right. You're not saying anything about it. You're not saying anything like maybe we can help them out. Maybe yeah. we can help them with manufacturing. Maybe we can, you know, um, do something to help the families to help the man uh, to uh, to help because most of these companies are very small companies. People yeah. are using their life savings. I know that I started upon nutrition. No investors, mm-hmm. nobody, nobody, no partners, nobody. Yeah, I did it on my own, and uh, it's still a struggle. Yes, mm-hmm. we're doing better. Yes, the company is growing, but right. so are the expenses, so are the struggles. Yeah, you know, we're still overwhelmed. We definitely understaffed. Mm-hmm. Because everything takes money, but we're trying our best. We're trying our best yeah. for some, you know, paid review to come and blast you that you're putting too much caffeine in it. That's all you got against me. Nothing else. And then you see yeah. me at the Olympia and you're running like a coward. Why don't you face me? Why don't you say it to my face that I'm a criminal, that what I'm doing <laughs> is, uh, you know, is illegal, or I'm trying to cause, you know, some problems for people by you know uh, that my products are harmful you're not going to do it why because you just got paid by other companies to promote them so what are you going to do about me who didn't pay you right you're going to bring you're going to try to bring me down i don't know if it's because you don't like me is it because i didn't pay you or perhaps somebody paid you to talk shit about me i don't know that yeah i don't know that you go all over the internet and there are supplement stores. We're not in a lot of supplement stores, but the number is definitely grown. Mm-hmm. And pretty much you will see supplement stores posting best tasting protein, best tasting protein. Our customers love your protein. You t- you have how many times you said the pollen is the best tasting protein? Yeah, for my for my money, there there is not a better chocolate or a peanut butter protein on the market. I haven't had the strawberry in a long time. I love strawberry. Your strawberry. I'm like I don't like all strawberries. I liked your strawberry a lot. Um but yeah, I mean, for my money, it's it's the it, plus it's a blend. So you got you got the thickness from the casein, you get the, the the whey protein for all the other good properties that whey has to offer, the high leucine content and all that. But I mean, just the, the flavor and the richness of them. I for my money, there's there's not a better protein on the market. Well, guess what? We didn't have a, we didn't win any awards, so you know you're probably not that that good of a judge. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah. No. Yeah, but th- that's what I'm talking about. Well, hey, that's this what year, talking, that's know. what I'll, I'll make the Supplement Engineer Awards program, and I'll just I'm just gonna be judged during executioner on everything. But there's oh, a minimum. I have tr- to be paid, trust me. You're gonna make money. I have to you're be paid five thousand dollars in order to uh, get ranked first place. So your bill's in the mail. No problem. <laughs> no problem. At least I know I'll be helping a friend. <laughs> yeah, but but th- that's a fact. And and let me ask you something. You review some uh, products sometimes. Um, yeah. I, you know, I need to get more regular I, with it. I, I enjoy it. 
I see. I I like doing it when I'm in the moment reviewing stuff because I, I like the banter and the, the playing off of each other with me and Sandy. It's just at the end of the day when I go to pick her up from school and then we get back home, shooting a review and pulling out all the shit to measure it. That's the last thing I want to do. I haven't seen my wife since you know six o'clock in the morning. I would rather just spend some time with her. Either go grab a drink, maybe go to get some food, or just relax and watch TV for an hour before we need to go pick up a halfling from daycare. So you know that's the the struggle that it is with doing reviews and stuff. I, I enjoy doing them. I mean, I, I did them for many, many years. Uh, and so I still like to do it and educate people. That's the main reason. I like to, I, it's a way for me to spend time with Sandy and I get to educate people on, hey, these are what the ingredients do in a more conversational manner than me just typing out some, you know, 4,000 word blog or something. Well, but let me ask you a question now. So you yep. reviewed uh, quite a few products yep. uh, ever since you've been on your own with Sandy. You reviewed a couple of products, right? Yeah. So companies send you products, just the like companies send products to other review channels, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Let me ask you this. How come, and I've seen, I've watched your reviews because I really enjoyed the scientific approach behind them. Yeah. Plus, Sandy is really hot. She's awesome, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I've never seen you review a product that is prop blend. Isn't it strange? I mean, I I feel like I've uh, torched well, we both prop lens enough. No, no, no. I, I think I think we both know the answer for this. The reason yeah. is because nobody in a right state of mind will send you a prop blend to review, knowing how knowledgeable you are and the fact that you're pretty much stating I'm not going to take money. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's not going to be any money. I don't have any advertising on my site. I don't make any money from any brands through my website or anything every all the podcasts i publish that's just on my own time the articles i put on the supplement engineer site that's that's my own dime and all that stuff i'm not getting any money from that from any brands there's no sponsors there's no ads no no nothing like that but but Um, you do work in the industry you do write articles right i do write articles for other brands i yeah exactly i consult i do formulation advice and stuff like that but there are so many problem companies there are so many of them yet nobody is sending you anything to review there are some very popular brands who use prop blends. They're very yeah. popular, and you see them all over almost any channel. Yet they yeah. don't sell, send anything to you, who is arguably, at least in my opinion, the most knowledgeable in the industry right now. To me, at least when you're breaking down all the ingredients, I mean, you taught me so so much, uh, and you're still teaching me a lot, and I, I'm never ashamed to admit. When people ask me who... Um, who does your formulas? I, I'm proud of it. I do my formulas, but I never shy away from the fact that I do consult with Robert Shinatsky and I do respect his opinion and I do ask him questions because it's the truth. Mm-hmm. I, I go to bed knowing that I, you know, uh, my conscience is clear. Yeah. I'm not lying about it. You know, I could easily hide, a, uh, hide away the fact that I, I ask you questions and I pick your brain. Right. I mean, how many times I think pretty much everybody who asked me because Bare Knuckle uh, received such warm welcome and people love it so much. But I constantly say, you know, when it comes to Fit Knox, that was Robert Shinatsky. It's actually when we met in Maryland, we met uh, yeah. with you and Sandy for your anniversary. We had dinner. Yeah. You looked at the formula and you're the one who suggested look into Fit Knox. I didn't even know about the ingredient. Yeah. And why, why would I be uncomfortable about it? Why would I hide that fact? I'm not going to hide that fact. Yeah. I'm proud of it. You know, I mean, I'm proud that Fitnox is part of that formula. I think it makes it even a better product. Mm-hmm. There's definitely scientific proof behind it. But it brings me back to the fact that no prop blend company, no garbage company, because there are some open label companies that are also garbage. Yeah. You know, they underdosed and they crap. But nobody sends you anything. The reason is because they're not going to take that risk. So right. that just proves how corrupt this, you know, uh, review market is where there are no reviews yeah. you know i mean try to call it something else try to call it something else i don't know a marketing something company yeah. limited or whatever the fuck it is because when you're giving awards to companies who sponsor you well that's not really awards yeah it's a conflict you know, of interest it's a conflict of interest so you know and people are not stupid because they they do kind of pay attention to it you know it's definitely paid for uh, I think that uh, today when you go and you check who reviews products, there are so many people who review products and you look at them, most of them look like they never even seen what the gym looks like. <laughs> you, it, it's the truth. You, yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, at least not yet, although I think I've done it quite a bit in the last few minutes. But uh, 
there is a review channel. He's probably gonna uh, he's probably gonna watch it. Um, who I would not send products to, at least not anymore. And for a simple reason, is because um, he had a top ten list, and in a top ten list, uh, in a pre workout, we were not in the top ten pre workout list, mm-hmm. uh, or top three or top five. I don't remember where we're not. Um, not that it hurt my feelings. Um, it just it was very 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 strange. However, in a I think it was a fat burner or something like that category of pre workouts, yeah. something like that. It was a strange. Uh, Hooligan was ranked number three mm-hmm. in a fat loss in a fat loss um, appetite suppressing category. Yeah, Hooligan was number three, but it got beat by Chaos. Chaos beat Hooligan. That's well, Chaos is a Chaos is a fat fat loss product. Yeah, I mean it's it's intended for fat loss. It's yeah. a, I think it's a great formula. Yeah, but it beat my own product, which is pre workout. Maybe it does have some appetite suppression properties, but most of pre workouts have some kind of a side effect. Right, you know one one or the other. But it was intended as a pre workout. It has alpha GPC, tyrosine. It has caffeine. It has everything mm-hmm. for a great pre workout. It has all the ingredients for a pre workout. Yet it ended up in a third place be- behind chaos and then in a nootropic uh, pre-workout or something over time got destroyed by some company who is a prop blend i do take offense to it yeah i do take offense to it because you know and and the guy did say to me you're very passionate about your products damn right i'm passionate about my products i'm very passionate about my products when you're putting overtime behind a prop blend that just doesn't add in terms of numbers and uh, it's behind it. No, I'm, it's not going to sit well with me. Yeah. It's not going to well sit well with me. I don't know why you did it. Lack of knowledge, lack of yeah. research, uh, got paid. I don't know. And I don't want to know. Right. But it just shows me, you know, not everybody should be uh, reviewing products. Not everybody. Far from. Yeah. You should not be reviewing products if you don't know what you're doing. And if you review products and you want to get paid, you know what? Guess what? I'm actually all for it. I have no problem with it. But call yeah. it sponsorship of a channel. You yeah. know, I, and, and I illustrated this example a few times, like Dave Palomba does. Dave Palomba, he owns or cones or something like that, species nutrition. Mm-hmm. Yet when his segment uh, RX Muscle, each and every program opens, it says, this that segment is brought to you by so-and-so. Right. You know, uh, whether it's Radcon or Apollo, I actually sponsor him. I did yeah. pay Dave Palombo oh, awesome. as a sponsor to get uh, because he has a lot of viewers. Oh yeah. So I pay. I you know it's just it's just like going you know to one of the NPC shows and being a sponsor. So Correct. you paid because yeah. your name is on a poster or something like that. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm all for it. Right. You know I paid for it. People that watch that segment they know that yeah. I paid for it because it said even though he owns another product, yeah. um, another company, people know that I paid for it. I have no problem with it. Yeah, transparency. I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah. I, I have no problem with it because they know that I didn't bribe them to talk shit about you know every other uh, uh, company. Yep. I didn't pay them to glorify me. It's just to bring me to his hundred, two hundred, five hundred thousand, or a million viewers or whatever the number he is. I right. paid him money. I sent him a check. Mm-hmm. I said for this many shows, and when the show starts. This is brought to you by Apollo Nutrition. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Right. And I think if any review channel wants to do it, as long as they review the products honestly, with knowledge, yeah. with transparency, without any attacking, and if they have the balls to call bullshit bullshit, yeah. I'll sponsor you. I'll sponsor you, no problem at all, because number one, in my opinion, you're going to have more viewers because people are going to turn to you because they know that you're not bullshit kind of a guy. Correct. They're gonna they're gonna turn to you. So why, if your viewership, if your follower, uh, if your following is you know in thousands, why wouldn't I pay to sponsor your channel, knowing that you know people gonna know about my brand, yeah. people gonna see my brand, I'm there. Right. Yet I don't have to worry about the fact that somebody's gonna accuse me. Well, Robbie just paid Robert Shinatsky shitload of money, so Robert would lie. No, <laughs> I, I, I I send you product whenever you want because you're my friend. You know, and like yep. I said, it it turns me on the fact that you, that you like it. <laughs> oh, it is. I I know how many brands you see. I know how many products you try. And for yeah. you to pick, you know, a palm 
you know, for protein needs or whatever, it's an honor. It's advertising in itself too, but it's an honor. Yeah. And you know, there are many times where I've watched actually one of your shows and you would say that you like Apollo nutrition and stuff like that. And it came out of nowhere. Like, why the fuck does he say it? Yeah. But you were just stating your opinion. Exactly. I mean, in a way, it's advertising because people listen to you, they respect you, and yeah. more than likely they will buy a container now. But yeah. again, it's unsolicited, it's not paid for. Correct. You know, and I heard many times that you actually, you were the one who made me buy Gaspari egg protein. Mm -hmm. You made me buy it because you told me that uh, salted caramel, I believe, that it tastes very, very good. Yeah, it's awesome. I went, I purchased, yeah, I went and I purchased it and I liked it. I had no problem with that. Yeah. And actually, it, I, mix, I mix a scoop of that with a scoop of your chocolate and it is like this awesome Snickers type flavor. So it's it soaks on like I mean I, I like to try that. this too. That's that's a really good blend to do together. Plus you're also getting egg protein to go along with the weigh-in casing, so you kind of get this multi-stage release kind of thing going on too when you get when you combine those two. Oh, oh yeah, all three top sources of protein, and yep. you know the product is great. It tastes great. It's creamy. I really liked it. Yeah. And like I said, I bought it because you told me that it's good. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure you didn't get paid by Gaspari. Nope, I'm trying to get rich on the podcast soon. So I've got I've got his number from when uh we met I met him briefly at the Apollo seminar in October, and so I've got his number, and we're hopefully going to get him on the podcast in the coming weeks. So that should be fun. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. No, he's. He, I mean, I've talked to him a couple of times, and you know, obviously he was honored at Apollo. I have absolutely no problem with him. I respect what he's done. You know, in terms of uh, his accomplishments, both as an athlete as uh, as an entrepreneur. I mean, I yeah. think it's. It's admirable for sure. Well, yeah, starting the company, then basically losing it to high tech, and then regetting it back. You know, it's it's pretty cool. It's a good it's a good heartwarming story. And so it's we can see, I guess, what they're going to be able to do now that he's back in charge of everything. Okay, yeah, I mean, like I said, he's a local guy. He always, um, you know, I know people that like him, people that don't like him, but that can be said about me, about Everybody. anyone else. Yeah, you know, but at least you know, with, from my conversations with him, I have no no problem with him and. You know, his act protein, salted caramel is, I've tried a few of those flavors and I think his is my favorite. Yeah. Should be good. So let's move on to some uh, more uh, pleasant topics. Go ahead. What do you have, uh, what's that pollen got in store for 2020? Are there any new flavors of new products coming out? Any new products? I mean, I, I know one or two products. I'm, I'm going to let you spoil them if you want to, but uh, what, what's yeah, all in, in the pipeline for 2020? Well, Assassin seems like it's going to stay because, like I said, the demand is overwhelming. And so far, the reception in the in the first few days was very, very nice and very warm and very welcoming. Yeah. So more than likely, it will stay. Um, I think that I think this is a good time. Well, there are a lot of companies who try to do like, you know, sister companies, brother companies and stuff like that. Right. And we had Anarchy Labs. For the reason is that it was a little bit edgier than Apollo Nutrition, even yeah. though Apollo Nutrition, I think, is edgy enough. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, we're going to bring everything in the near future under Apollo brand only. So it looks like Assassin is going to be an Apollo uh, product. Awesome. In uh, I think in 2020, it just I think it creates less confusion. I don't see a reason why to have so many different uh, and there are so many labs, um, anarchy labs, this labs, that labs. Everybody is a lab, right? And nobody and, actually and, has a lab. Yeah, <laughs> Very most few of the people actually have basement. a lab. <laughs> most of it is in a basement or a bathtub or something like right. that. So that's the reason why I kind of like the whole anarchy labs. You know, it seems like a kind of a rebellion thing, but I think under a palm, it makes more sense. Uh, we are releasing the first product that's going to be released from Anarchy Labs under Apollo Nutrition is going to be Overtime. So, and again, awesome. I can reveal it right now, I guess. Overtime is going to be slightly different, slightly different under mm -hmm. Apollo Nutrition than Anarchy Labs. Surprisingly, it's actually going to be a little bit edgier. Yeah, I was so, gonna say don't change uh, it. Don't change that too much because I I really like it where it is right now. <laughs> well, uh, don't, don't don't don't. So if people are gonna hate it, I'm gonna definitely hold you responsible because the only main ingredient that was added was new pept. Oh sweet, you're adding new pept to it. Yeah. Oh well then, shit. Never mind. It's good. Yeah. You, well, yeah. You've already got 600 milligrams of alpha GPC, 50 percent mm -hmm. in there. 
So, yep. uh, yeah, you're, you're fine. You're not going to put anybody into a choline headache, or you shouldn't at least. No, 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 no. no. I mean, it's uh, 30 milligram of new pept, and that's it. That's pretty much the whole difference that it comes to it. So, uh, you know, let me go on record and say, guys, I hope you like it. I, I liked it. I think it's a phenomenal product. I think it's an improvement. Yeah. If you hate it, blame it on Robert Shunetsky. It was his idea. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Are you going to keep it as a cap, or is it going to go to a powder? Uh, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be six caps because uh, Teobro mine just tastes like shit. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, and those all those stimulants, they also taste kind of crappy. So yeah. uh, we might experiment it in the near future uh, to release it in powder form too. But for now, it's going to be exactly the same six caps. It's just the difference is going to be a new pap and it's going to be under a pollen. Okay. Um, another thing that we are releasing and you saw that formula is uh, the new Chaos, mm -hmm. which... Everybody who tried, they absolutely love it. Um, it's definitely a huge improvement. Even though I think Keras was always one of the best, um, if not the best, fat burners on the market. Um, but this one is definitely an improved formula. Mm -hmm. um, it's good. I'm actually really looking forward to it. Uh, we tested it with few people. It creates heat. I mean, and again, you you gave a little bit of input with the GBB in it too. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, it's definitely going to be a kick-ass product. Uh, yeah. The main difference is going to be some people were a little bit concerned. I can't believe I'm giving you credit again because it's your responsibility. Oh, actually, shit. I, I, I got to give you credit for this. So the main thing with Chaos, the only negative part of it was that some people felt a little bit funky when it came to, you know, the feeling in their stomach. Mm -hmm. And I think you and I talked about it and we attributed it to cayenne pepper. Mm -hmm. So we released, we, we replaced cayenne pepper with Capsimax. Yeah, that'll be the, the enteric coating on it. It'll make it go a little bit easier on the, uh, the GI system in transit. Yes. So we, we changed that. And then um, um, Grains of Paradise, um, mm -hmm. um, we increased from 50 milligram to 225. You know, which yeah. is... Which definitely creates heat. It's perfectly safe. It's perfectly normal, but yeah. it definitely gives you more of that thermogenic effect. Mm -hmm. And we did add then the lion root, which now is going to give you also a little bit of help with kind of a diuretic effect. Yeah. Um, so I think that this formula is absolutely incredible, and we're going to release it in the next three or four weeks. Um, another project that we are working on for 2020 is uh, I, I can't say again, just being transparent, I can't say that it was my idea but this has to do more with uh, financial reward and that is uh, releasing pure isolate mm -hmm. so we're gonna release isolate i still think that 50 50 formula is the best there is i think that's the ideal option yeah and all, all the studies real studies show that it's actually superior to just isolate but you know nothing wrong with having an isolate product and especially if it's going to taste good right so we're going to release isolate later in 2020 i would probably say around summertime mm -hmm. um and oh and last but not least we're getting an upgrade on uh, enigma enigma is going to be released sometimes in mid-march okay. beginning april mm -hmm. and that's going to be absolutely loaded formula i mean literally nobody has seen anything like it up till now um, Hooligan is going to get an upgrade too because it's basically now kind of like customary that every year is a new Hooligan version. Mm -hmm. So Hooligan is going to be released also probably sometimes around summer 2020. Excellent. Um, that's it, I think, for now. I think we're good. In terms of flavors, we're probably going to change or add maybe a flavor to Hooligan. Mm -hmm. But um, in terms of protein, adding multiple flavors... I'm just, I don't see a reason for it. I just, I'm still sticking to my guns that, you know, people will always go for vanilla. People will always go for chocolate, peanut yeah. butter, strawberry to some extent. Maybe yeah. not as popular, but to some extent. Other than that, having all those uh, cinnamon and cookies and dolce de leche and popsicles yeah. and all those flavors, I think that they vary either seasonal or one of those flavors that, oh, cool, I'll have it. And then you end up having maybe a shake a week or maybe every two or three weeks. Yeah, It just doesn't seem like it's a popular flavor. None of those flavors are popular. They're more like sporadic here and there. So I believe right. that if you're a chocolate or vanilla person and you like a palm product, you're probably going to buy a tub of chocolate or vanilla on a monthly basis. Correct. But when it comes to flavors that are kind of funky for marketing purposes, yeah, maybe it's cool. 
Yeah. You know, if you have money to burn, okay, why not? Mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of like adding so many form, uh, so many flavors, ten flavors, fifteen flavors, don't see a reason to do that. I don't yeah. think I would ever do that. Gotcha. Do you? Would you ever consider doing uh, something like an exclusive uh, flavor collaboration with a retailer? If y'all brokered some really good partnership uh, with either not somebody as big as GNC, but some one of someone like the mom and pop retail stores and you came out with just an exclusive flavor collaboration because we've seen that happen a few times in 2019 is that something you would ever be interested in or do you think do you think it's 100%. worth it or do you think it, it serves a purpose or is, is it a good thing is it a bad thing or is it just kind of a eh, how do you feel about well, it well you, you see the thing is when it comes to exclusivity especially if it's like a smaller store mm -hmm. let's face it i mean how many units can they realistically move right you know you know with you getting two three five thousand uh, um, units or something like that especially for a smaller company like ours mm -hmm. and you're distributing it to stores and you're distributing it direct to the consumer so you have so many channels of distribution when you're selling to a store even if the store is doing good, I mean, um, apart from your product, they could probably sell in other products as well. Right. So, you know, uh, how many units can they get? 200, 500, mm -hmm. 1,000 units? I don't think they can do more than 1,000 units. Right. Uh, I mean, for that store to, to get 1,000 exclusive, I mean, they're going to have to push it. They're going to have to push it, which means they're going to have to kind of like put aside everything else. Um, yeah. I, I, I was approached by two stores right now that are moving large quantities that want to collaborate and do something like that mm -hmm. so basically my idea is okay i mean let's do it we can partner on that i mean it's easy yeah. um, most of my manufacturers uh want a thousand units per flavor minimum mm -hmm. um you know, there is one or two that I can probably convince to go to 500 or something like that. Yeah. You know, I can't get a thousand units if you're willing to pick up only 200 and have an exclusivity. What the fuck am I going to do with 800 if I cannot sell them? Right. They, they, they only basically we have an agreement that you're the only one who's going to sell it and you're becoming basically my partner. Mm -hmm. So you're not, you know, making certain profit. Now you're actually legitimately my partner. Yeah. You know, your name is on it. Your name is on a, on a, on a label as well. Right. You're exclusive. So if somebody wants to collaborate, it has to be a good partner. We have a couple of very good ones. Mm -hmm. And it has to commit probably to a minimum of 500 units. Then it makes sense to do it. I mean, pick your own flavor. I do, you know, my, uh, my formula because, you know, the formula cannot deviate. Um, and that's it. But to collaborate in terms of collaboration just with people in general, I was uh, never hiding that fact that I'm willing to do it. Mm -hmm. It can be somebody international, it can be a store, or it can be some brilliant mind like yourself. You yeah. know, I was never I was never against, but it has to be somebody I actually at least respect because you're entering into a different category where you're becoming partners. Yep. And... You know, friendship aside, you want to make sure that the business aspect doesn't affect the friendship. So you have to be very, very careful with that. Correct. But, um, you know, to answer the question, yeah, obviously open to it 100%. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the industry might be going that way more? Do you think that might start to become a more commonplace occurrence? Just because we know that people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. And that's kind of propelled a lot of companies to either update their formulas yearly or release a bunch of new products and phase out old products. It seems like they're coming out with a new product every year. Um, do you think these exclusive flavor collaborations or these small batch product runs are just going to be a continuing trend that's going to continue to grow to where we're not going to see companies aren't going to have the same products year after year after year. It'll be, we've got it for, you know, three to six months and then we'll have a new product for three to six months and then a new product for three to six months or a new flavor. Do you think it's going to go that way eventually? Uh, you know what? I think that this is the trend that we're going to right now. Will it stick? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Will it work uh, in the long term? I don't think so either. Because at the same time, while it's something unique and consumer always wants something unique, something different, something new, yeah. um, you know, we, we've seen some brands releasing uh, 10 pre-workouts a year, which is completely ridiculous. Right. Um, you know, there is only so much room you can grow. Um, I think that by giving the consumer so many options, mm -hmm. um, you're kind of spoiling the consumer. The expectations are too high. Yeah. And then if you don't deliver on those expectations, they're going to go elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, you have to stick to your guns. You have to stick to your, um, to your strength. 
and you have to improve on your weaknesses. That's what I believe in. Yeah. Um, because the thing is, if you partner, say, with a retail store, an average retail store, we're not talking about chains or something like that. And mm-hmm. they, most of the time, not most of the time, all the time, they carry a few brands. They, they carry a large number of brands. Yeah. Um, and then once they kind of commit to 500 or 1,000, I mean, they buy, what, 20 units, 50 units, maybe 100 units. But once they commit to 500 or 1,000, and they obviously have a little bit more reward because now they're becoming your partner, so yeah. the profit is a little bit higher, mm-hmm. they kind of forced to push that product. Yet there is something on the market that is very popular, and people are coming into the store and asking for that product. But you don't have it. Yeah, you don't have it because you're focusing primarily on that particular uh, brand because mm-hmm. obviously you know you invested in it. And if uh, the the owner of the brand is smart, he's probably going to charge you full full amount of money. He will, will charge you to commit to it. Right. So now you have shit lot of product in your basement or whatever you're keeping it in your storage, mm-hmm. and then you have shit lot of product in uh, on your shelves you have to move so i think the pressure on you is tremendous yet there is some assassin that just came out on the market that everybody wants and you don't have it you don't have it because it's not a cheap product right um and what you're offering is just not good enough so the consumer comes to you and goes like yeah but you know what i want assassin you don't have it okay i'm gonna go to your nearest competition which probably is not that far anyway because Mm -hmm. everything is so close by yeah so I think it's a very dangerous territory that everybody's entering mm-hmm. by having that exclusivity. Um, I think that it's doable. It just has to be within reason, and it has to be very well balanced. It's the same thing as we are selling products direct to the consumer. We're yeah. selling direct to the consumer at Apollon Gym and on Apollon Nutrition website. Mm-hmm. Yet, you know, if the stores see that your prices are ridiculously low uh, and they cannot beat you on that price, they yeah. don't want to carry you either. Correct. You know, because, yeah. you know, they want you to be five, 10, $15 more expensive. Mm-hmm. So people that live in the area will stop by the store. Well, I can get it here. Right. You know, so it has to be very, very well balanced. Mm-hmm. So everybody kind of, you know, uh, th- that it makes sense for each and every party involved. Mm-hmm. You cannot, you cannot do too much. So when you commit to exclusively to one brand and you're pushing it, well, guess what? the other brand is kind of getting upset. And I've seen, there is actually one example. Uh, I'm not going to name the the name of the company because they hate me, but who doesn't hate me? Um, (laughs) They were selling selling to to this particular store that we do business with too. Mm -hmm. They were selling their products. In fact, that that store was carrying a lot of their products from from day one. Yeah. Um, Then all of a sudden, they were coming out with a new product and they said, you know what? We have an exclusive deal with a different store. So he goes, well, I want the product because he's been supporting them. Yeah. And they go like, well, you know what? We can't, you know, for a specific period of time, yeah. a certain period of time, we are only going to be able to sell through them. We got an exclusive deal with them. Yeah. I was at the store at the time where, when the owner was actually very upset about it. And the first thing he says to me, well, fuck them. I'm not supporting that brand anymore. I was supporting them from day one. They fucked me and they went to somebody else, gave it exclusivity. Now, when people come and ask for that particular product, I don't have it because somebody else got exclusivity. And guess what? They lost that account. Mm -hmm. They lost that account. And he he was not the only account that they, they lost locally. I know for a fact. Yeah. Yeah. So by going exclusivity with just one, you kind of force to screw over somebody else. Right. You're forced to do it. You don't have a choice. So it has to be, in, in my opinion, again, I'm no expert. I'm still learning a lot about the, the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it, it's a very delicate matter, and you yeah. have to be very, very careful about it. Mm-hmm. Very careful. If it's a particular flavor, maybe, but still, I think very limited run, I think, you know, to make sure that the other brands don't get offended yeah. that work with that particular retailer, mm-hmm. you have to be very careful. Because right. once you're everywhere, you know, I see brands that are selling to me, for example, and then they sell to my nearest competition across the street. Now we end up fighting for, you know, for prices. Right. Now we, want, now we are competing. Now both of us actually dislike the brand because Correct. we yeah. feel like we are cheated. You know, if you're selling to me and we have a good deal and good thing going on, 
Yeah. Don't sell it to my competition. Number one, you can control the prices better. Right. You know, number two, there is definitely a certain loyalty going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We, we have, um, we have a store in Massachusetts that uh, I'm very, I have very good relationship with. Mm-hmm. And there is another store in Massachusetts that reached out to me and they said, like, we would like to carry your products. Yeah. I didn't start like looking how close they are or whatever. Mm-hmm. What I did was I texted the owner of the store that I'm friends with and I said, like, listen, so and so reached out to us. He yeah. wants to carry our products. Before I even enter into any negotiation or whatever with him, yeah. I want to make sure that it's okay with you mm-hmm. that they're not your competition. I'm not very familiar with Massachusetts. I, I don't know how close they are or anything like that. Yeah. He goes to me, well, actually, he says they're not that far. They're not my direct competition, yeah. but we do share some customers and stuff like that. I pulled the plug immediately. Yeah. Immediately, I didn't even enter into any kind, you know, negotiations or anything like that. I don't want to be in that store. Right. Why would I screw over somebody who became a friend, somebody who supports my line, somebody who posts about a poem nonstop, mm-hmm. somebody I developed relationship with in the last year? Why? Just so I could sell more? I think in the long run, it's going to backfire. Yeah, that's a valid point. I mean, you you can only burn so many bridges before you're standing alone and you're screwed. You know, I understand that there are a lot of people who dislike me, and I have no problem with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know there are a lot of people who actually like what I stand for. Yeah. And those are the people I care about, and that's it. I'm, you know, even during this interview, I didn't directly name or attack anyone. So if the people don't know who I'm talking about, they really don't know. Yeah. And the fact that this industry is fucked up, well, it's no secret anyway. Correct. So I'm not going to go after you unless you go after me. I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to stick to my guns and I'm going to stick uh, I'm going to stick to my transparency. I'm going to stick to my integrity. And I think that uh, based on a success of a poem, slow and steady, we're not we didn't explode like some other brands who, you know, have crazy amount of money in terms of like um, you know, for advertising and promotion and yeah. and, and expansion. But we've been steadily growing every year. Mm-hmm. So I guess we are doing something right, yet I'm still not shy to admit that I'm still learning about it. Absolutely. Along those lines, since you, you brought up, what do you think about brands in their advertising when they're constantly advertising, buy one, get one 50% off, or buy $10 worth of supplements and we're going to give you $500 worth of free shit, you know, hoodies, sandals, shakers. All. What are your thoughts as a brand owner? Um with companies that do that kind of marketing or get, do those kind of giveaways with their, or every other week there's some kind of new BOGO on their site? Well, I guess we both know who you're talking about, but the thing is most people will know. But in my opinion, like I said, um, I'm not the one to judge mm-hmm. in this particular case. I don't agree with it. I definitely yeah. don't agree with it because I would consider, my, consider myself an intelligent consumer. Mm-hmm. So to me, when you're giving me... Um, a container of something that the retail value is um, $50, right? Yeah. You're telling me, okay, this is $50. If you spend $50, I'm going to give you a hoodie. Mm-hmm. On top of it, I'm going to give you free shipping. On top of it, I'm going to give you another something, something. So now I add, okay, the cost of hoodie, if you, even if you're giving me at cost, you know, it still costs you something. Right. I mean, hoodies, hoodies go on average, depends on the material, I I would say probably fifteen to twenty dollars. They're not cheap, right? You know, so you just spend say fifteen dollars. You're giving it to me free. On top of it, you're giving me free shipping, which is not free because you're still paying for it, correct? And it can be anywhere. I don't know, four to ten dollars. Yeah. So that's another twenty twenty five dollars. You're just giving it to me for free. Yeah. Then on top of it, you gave me something else that cost another five ten dollars. Now you're giving me thirty thirty five dollars, and you're selling me a product that is cost only fifty bucks. So I'm not stupid. I understand you're still making profit. Yeah. So if after hoodie, after product, after shipping, after all that, you're still making money off of me, how much that that's, that that crap cost? Yeah, what, what's I mean, the actual quality of your products? The, the quality of the product is going to come into a question, even if it's going to be full transparency, even if there's going to be like, but I'm definitely going to question it. Yeah. I'm not going to look at it as a deal. It's mm-hmm. not a deal because if I see that you have, you know, Cars and houses and yachts and fuck no, no private planes and stuff like that. Yeah. I know that I financed it. Mm-hmm. So that fifty dollars 
and the free shit that you gave me that is definitely not free, you still paid for it, <laughs> and you still made so much money, it just tells me that it, it makes me question your products. It makes me question your, I mean, if you ask me right now, what's the best deal you can give me on whole again, uh, 10% direct, 20% off, 25% off, I can probably give you no problem. Yeah. You know, it's doable because we've done it. Yeah. But in after, you know, the cost of whole again, retail value, I think is $55. Mm-hmm. Even if we give you 20, 25, 30% off, it still comes to about $40. And plus on top of it, there is yeah. a shipping cost. So, you know, we're making money off of it. Correct. And, you know, denying it or saying, oh, Robert, we're giving you a cost. No, it doesn't cost $40 to make whole again. No. It doesn't. So we're definitely making profit. Yeah. So you should be okay knowing that you are getting a deal because mm-hmm. you're not paying $55 for it. You're right. paying 15, 20 bucks less. You're getting a good deal. Yeah. But I'm also making money, which reassures me that my company is going to grow and I'm going to be able to give you more products and yeah. better deals in the future. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be, I'm going to have more buying power. So my volumes are going to grow. If my volumes yeah. are going to grow, they're going to give me cheaper product. They're going to charge me less. If they're going to charge me less, I'm going to give it back to you. Of course, I'm going to make money off of it too. Right. I'm not going to deny it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to tell you, you know what? Um, uh, I'm making no money off of it because I love you so much. You're getting a deal. No, yeah. I'm making money off of you. I'm not going to hide it. And you should thank me that I'm honest with you. Yeah. So I don't believe in that. The only time I will believe, and I have done it, I admit, in Bogo deals, mm-hmm. is um, when, for example, we still have some inventory left mm-hmm. and we have something new coming, you know, a better formula or improvement, yeah. but there's still some left behind, like a couple of hundred units or stuff like that. Yeah. By doing a Bogo, we're still making money, mm-hmm. but we also clearance, uh, we're doing a clearance. It's, it's a clearance, really, more than yeah. anything to bring new product, better product, and to make sure that we don't lose money once that product comes. Correct, yeah. In, 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 that, in that case, 100% yes. I mm-hmm. don't see a problem with it. I don't think anything wrong with it. Yeah. But when you're doing Bogo sales and you know, you're dropping like crazy numbers and you're giving away hoodies, bags, clothes, and, and this and that, and it's like nonstop, that makes me question your integrity actually more. Yeah. And it makes me question your honesty more. To me, I mean, and again, I know I'm a minority for sure because clearly the company is growing like weed. I mean, yeah. so I am I am a minority and you're probably that minority too because you're just like me when it comes to it because you're analyzing everything. Right. But to me, you're not getting a deal. I think you are actually, it just goes to show that the product that you're purchasing is more than likely, I'm not going to say definitely, but more than likely, it's not that good. Yeah, I, I have my echoed my sentiments a hundred percent but again this is just being honest if the company is doing business that way good for them if it's you working know, for I mean, them i guess yeah if it's if it's working for them they 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 booming they growing they're doing great fantastic if yeah. the consumer falls for that because they think they're getting a deal i mean good for the company i still don't think it's good for the consumer Right, you know, because you're thinking, you're saving, and you're parading, wearing those clothes, advertising for the company. So you're like a free advertising because you paid for it now. Right. So yeah, but then again, that's just me. So no, I'm not a believer in it. Yeah. Um, uh, on paper, it looks like I should shut the fuck up in comparison. But I'm just stating my opinion. My opinion, and I think even if I was at that level financially, I would not do it. Yeah. Well put, Robbie. Well put, man. Uh, in in bringing this home, I want to I want to get some fun questions. I'm going to throw your way. Sure. So earlier you mentioned Sylvester Stallone and, and Rocky and Rambo movies. Did you see the most recent Rambo, Last Blood? Yes. Yes. What did you think of it? And what is your favorite Rambo of the the franchise? Well, first Rambo, that's that's a given. First one, I mean, yeah. that was original. That was the best one, in my opinion. That was uh, incredible, especially considering I think it was made in 81 or 82. Yeah. Um, you know, considering the times, the way it was shot, um, I think it was incredible. It was very innovative. Mm-hmm. I think it was great. I think it was one of Sylvester Stallone's best acting as well. Yeah. Very emotional. It was more than action movie. Um, a lot of people had a problem with the last one. Mm-hmm. I partic- I personally didn't. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't have a. I didn't have a problem with the last one. I think it was a very 
nice closure considering his age, mm -hmm. considering where he's been, and considering everything else. Yeah, I thought it was nice. I thought um, um, I think at this point we can give it away. I was glad that he didn't die because, um, yeah. in my opinion, I expected him to die, and I didn't want to see that. I really, I think that character is so dear to everybody's heart. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I grew up, uh, you know, I came to the United States in 97, which means, you know, Rambo was already out for 15 years. Yep. But even if you went in Soviet Union, even though they made fun of Russians in uh, Rambo 3 mm -hmm. and Rocky 4, Russians loved those movies. And I have a fun fact for you. I was actually in Rambo 3. Were you? Yeah, well, I, I was an extra in the movie. They shot the movie in Israel. Yeah. And I lived in Israel at that time, so That's they actually it. offered us to be, you know, extras in the movie. We didn't even know what it was, so they brought us to oh, to man. a desert. Yeah. So I saw Sylvester Stallone only from from a distance. <laughs> but when they have like all the bombing and stuff like that, yeah, and you have people running all the way, uh -huh. uh, all around, I yeah. was actually one of those who was running. I just watched Rambo three. Uh, I want to say maybe two months ago. I'm gonna have to go back and like go frame by frame at those points and see if I can actually. Yeah, good luck. There was like shitload of people. <laughs> You know, and I was at the time, I think I was 15 or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I love Rambo. Right? Yeah. I thought the, the last one, the, the, I, I'll, I'll watch any of them. I was, I even liked Rocky Five, which everybody hates. I liked it. See, I had the same feelings for Last Blood that I did for Rocky Five. Don't, and I, I really liked Rambo Four, or just with the one that was just called Rambo, when he's in the jungles, mm -hmm. is it Thailand or. Wherever, whatever yeah. jungle he's in in that one. I really like that one. I thought that was great after the long layoff between three and four. The fifth one, I like the last 30 minutes of the movie when he's killing all the cartel guys and he's booby-trapped the house. That's great. The first hour of the movie, I, I it was don't... slow. Well, it, I just, I didn't care about the girl dying or, you know, the, the mom that he, like, or that I girl's mom or her I aunt. can totally see it. I it, can totally see it because it kind of took away from the concept of Rambo. Right. It, he wasn't this big softy guy. I mean, he, he goes around, kills people, blows shit up and, you know, saves the girl and that's the end of the, that's the end of the day and he's on to his next mission. This one, it, I mean, maybe he would have softened up in his 60s or 70s, however old he's supposed to be. I just, I didn't, I didn't. Maybe they didn't do a good job of making me try to care for the girl, but I thought, look, if you're going to go off to Mexico and sneak off and not tell Rambo you're going down there or your aunt, you deserve what's coming to you. And you get, you know, you go sneak I this had... guy, the sketchy guy, you deserve what's coming to you. I, I don't feel bad for you for dying. <laughs> you know what? I had, uh, I, I had a similar feeling i mean i like the movie but i do understand yeah. what you're saying because i remember when i was describing the movie i said that i think it was a good movie yeah but it was a very light version of rambo right yeah you know because uh, when, when it comes to rambo we expect extreme violence and it had violence i mean yeah, the, the, the very end it's, spectacular. It's, it's, it's easily the goriest i think i've seen a rambo movie um especially compared to the first couple of them uh, I mean, the gore factor was there, but just the first hour of the movie, I, I just wanted him to get to the point where he started killing people. And it, I understand, you know, he, it was fine him getting the shit kicked out of him earlier in the movie by the cartel guys. That was fine. Um, but the the girl, the whole, you know, high school, college age girl, however old she was, I I just had no emotional connection the, to it with, whatsoever. I, I, I think the problem with this one is, if there is one, I think that, I think Sylvester Stallone wanted to end it yeah. on... Uh, on a special note, yeah. I think, and I also think that the current affair of um, what we have in, you know, political climate yeah. definitely affected it, so to speak, right. because um, let's face it, you cannot say, you know, it's, it's funny because I joked about this recently, that people used to come to the United States because it's a land of the free. Mm -hmm. And there is freedom of speech and stuff like that. But the reality is uh, there is no freedom of speech. You can't really say what you want. I mean, you can, but more than likely there's going to be consequences. And as a result, yeah. when people want to tell you something or say something, they look around to make sure that nobody is listening. You know, even right. the way, you know, we do this, I wouldn't call it an interview, more of a friend's conversation. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I look at it from outside, it looks a little bit too transparent. It looks a little bit too offensive. Yeah. Yet we didn't say nothing offensive. We stated the truth and we expressed our opinions and that's it. But the reality is there's going to be a lot of people. 90% are going to hate me. They're going to hate me and 10% probably going to hate you for being my friend. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but the truth is, is that 
that freedom of speech and and to tell the truth um it's definitely not what it used to be like you know i actually recently said that i went to the to a russian film festival last year mm -hmm. and it was in manhattan and i wanted to use the bathroom after the movie yeah. and on a bathroom i mean there was two like men's and women's but uh the sign for men and women was very very small you could barely see it yeah. however in big bold letters it said basically that um you know you can be whatever you want to be, basically, you know, any gender. So, you know, I yeah. could freely go into women's bathroom. If that happened 10, 20 years ago, yeah. I would probably get arrested and beaten up. Today, I can just walk into women's bathroom and say, well, I'm not sure if I'm a man or a woman. I'm undecided. Weird. You know, and there's, and there's literally nothing you can say. Exactly. You say weird, yet already a lot of people could judge you for that statement right now because, yeah. you know what, why is it weird? I decided that maybe I'm a woman. You know, if... If you said it to me, I started. I would start laughing at you. Yeah, but but major not majority, but today it can be offensive. Well, yeah, it can be offensive. Freedom of speech exists so long as somebody doesn't get their panties in a twist and get offended. Because once that happens, we've seen it enough times with athletes. A coach will say something, or an athlete will say something, and then because some little mindless sycophant gets their panties in a twist, they have to do this big staged apology. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend so and so. I was just saying this. I was really misrepresented, or I misworded it, and I misspoke. Well, everybody just needs to grow a thick, a uh, fucking thicker layer of skin and just deal with stuff. You know, it, it's well, only words. You know, if you don't like it, go listen to something else or change the channel. Well, you have done uh, martial arts when you were younger, right? And yeah. I mean, I am older than you, but I would still say that we come from the same generation, so to speak. Yeah. And when you were when you were learning martial arts, whatever the coach or sensei says, fuck, you have to do it. Yeah, no questions asked. Exactly. There's no. When, yeah, I, I'm. I, I'll be 45 in two weeks, and my coach is uh, in his early 50s, mm -hmm. and sometimes he says things to me to do that I literally would love to shoot him for that. I hate him, yeah. you know, and but never would I dare to question his opinion. Never would I question his authority. Correct. I'm a 45-year-old man who says to his, uh, to his coach, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can barely breathe. I'm about to collapse. I'm about to die. I feel like there is nothing left in me. He's hitting me hard, you know. I yep. cannot even longer defend myself. I'm an adult. I'm a father. I'm a business owner. I don't need to take this shit. Yeah. But yet, I'm saying, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He comes and he says to me, your cardio sucks. You suck. I'm like, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, and I don't know any other way. That's the only way for me to do it. Yet, I talked to my boxing coach last uh, last week. And he told me that he had a class of kids, I don't know, teenagers or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were driven by, by their parents. And a mother is sitting, watching her son train mm -hmm. uh, with a coach. And the coach says to him, well, you have to do this and this. He answers, I don't want to. He goes, well, you have to. Well, I don't yeah. want to. So he goes, uh, Rob, he says, I'm in a very, very bad situation. He says, I don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. You know, he goes to him, you have to do what I say. So the kid takes his gloves off. And he throws it at the coach and he says, well, I don't want to do this, you know, and he goes and he sits, which sets a bad example for every other kid. Right. Yet the mother sa sits there and he says, she doesn't do anything. Wow. You know? I, I mean, if I would, I'm 45, I'm 45 in two weeks. Yeah. It would not cross my mind mm -mm. to even attempt to do something like that. Number one, and my coach, I mean, forget about my Muay Thai coach, my boxing coach is 27 or something. Yeah. He's, he's young enough to be my son, yeah. yet he's the boss. I don't question his authority. I don't, I don't say anything. Whatever he says to do, I do. I hate him. I'm in pain, but I do it. Right. You know, that's just the level. That's how we were brought up. Yeah. You know, and, exactly. and, and today you cannot say a lot of things that you want to say because there might be consequences you know, you might be racist, sexist, uh, you know, and God knows what else. Right. You know, so to me, that's that that that's a huge problem. And I think if we would be a little bit more, we 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 we, we pride ourselves on being transparent. We're products. Mm -hmm. It's not the products. Products are not really that complicated to be transparent. Just be honest. Put the good shit in your products, and Correct. you know the right dosages. Um, ask somebody like Robert Shinetsky or go Google it and learn a little bit, and you're good to go. You know, it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. It's being transparent as a person. Yeah. That's what's challenging. Right. It's to be to be true to yourself, to be honest, and to be honest with others, and to be able to, you know, to say things as they are and not to sugarcoat anything. I think that's what's very, very challenging for people to do. 
for me, it comes easy because I just don't know any other way. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know any other way. And yeah. the funny thing is, is that sometimes for, <laughs> I'm paying the price for being honest. Yeah. You know, you know, the people say, like, why don't you bring assassin? Because I want to make money. Yeah. What else? That's, yeah. If we, there's a demand for it and you know you can make a good one, then shit, yeah, why not? They're, 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 you know, I'm honest. So what now you're going to say? You're going to call me greedy? Yeah. Well, what are you, what are you going to call me? Why would you call me that? Exactly. You know, oh, you know what? Assassin is expensive. Assassin is fucking loaded. You just paid 70 bucks for proprietary blend crap yeah. that cost a fracture of what Assassin cost to manufacture. Just because, oh, it hit me hard. I, you know what? So fucking go get yourself a triple espresso. It will hit your heart too. Yeah. I was just talking mm -hmm. to Justin about this. There's seventy dollars seems to be like the new benchmark for supplements because within the past week, there's been I've seen three different seventy dollar products come out. One of them is was touted as this next generation recovery formula where all it is it's velocitol, BCAAs, and some C B D extract. And I'm thinking oh, seventy dollars for this? Are you fucking kidding me? That's that's such a ripoff to the consumer. It's ridiculous. Well, again, I know which brand you're talking about because that was apparently a new brand of the year. But uh, the thing is, is that it's so ridiculous and people fall for it. Yeah. People, people fall for it. You know, it's a unique formula. I'll agree to that. It's unique. Yeah. It's unnecessary. It's not worth $70. You know, but it's unique. Yeah. It, it's definitely unique because I haven't seen anything like it. But the thing is, is that, you know, if we're going to go that route, then why don't we do the following? Let's do protein powder. I don't know. Yeah. Concentrate and add some. Uh, I don't know. Eight hundred milligram of caffeine to it. You know, yeah. and then on top of it, let's add some tyrosine in it, and I don't know, and some other crap CBD. Yeah. And let's have a unique formula. You bet it's unique. It's definitely right. going to be very unique. It's going to be groundbreaking. Who the yeah. fuck needs it? Exactly. Yeah. And and you're going to charge probably for it a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, so just again, if the consumer was, I'm not saying that everybody should be educated on every subject. And, you know, if somebody doesn't know about supplements, does not necessarily make them dumb or stupid. No, right. not at all. But if you don't know something, fucking ask. Yeah. There are so many people that are knowledgeable. You know, maybe yeah. don't ask your local retailer because some of them are not exactly very honest. And they're getting you commissions know, to push other products, too. And, and they're getting commission to push other products. Maybe don't ask the owner of the or somebody who works for that particular company. But again, Google. Yeah. I know for a fact that if somebody sent you a message or something like that, you would answer it. You would not hesitate to answer. Just ask. Yeah. You know, there is no shame if not no, in not knowing something. You can always learn. Correct. You can always learn. You know, we have um, with Kansak, we have uh, a certain day. Uh, once a week mm -hmm. when I, I like to watch fights. I like to watch fights. I like to watch different techniques. I like, yeah. I like to, and I'm still learning. I'm right. still learning. So when I come to, to the gym, mm -hmm. we actually have a session, no kicking, no punching. Mm -hmm. I'm asking questions. I'm asking questions. Is this particular technique good? Oh, I've seen this guy do right. this. Yeah. And I saw that and you know what? And he says to me, well, this is stupid. This is good. But he also explains to me why this is stupid. Right. He shows me why it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Instead of just hitting the pads, I'm actually learning. Yeah. I'm learning and I'm not ashamed to ask. I will never be ashamed to ask a question ever because that's the only way for me to learn. Right. You know, if it comes to supplements and ingredients and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I'm always going to be asking your questions because I know how knowledgeable you are. I know that you're doing research constantly yep. and stuff like that. I'm not ashamed of it. Not ashamed to admit that Robert helped me with a certain formulation or with a certain ingredient. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not ashamed. I'm proud of it. Yeah. I'm proud of it that instead of experimenting and doing something I'm not sure of, or maybe putting somebody, you know, in danger possibly, because we, we're talking about people's health. Correct. I know that I ask somebody who is knowledgeable, somebody I trust, somebody who's doing research, who's up to date with pretty much most of the ingredients on the market. I just yeah. asked, and it makes me feel good. Because yeah. I learn, and I know that I'm doing something that is justified. Yeah. 100%, man. 100%. Well, Robbie, these chats always go on and on, and I feel like we could keep going for the rest of the day. Uh, so to be, continued, I, like to be continued like last time, my man. Thank you so much for our, uh, our chat, the constant support over the years. It's, it's an honor to be able to call you a friend in the industry. 
Um, Thank you so much, Rob. Just being an awesome guy. Sandy always says that you are you are the nicest guy, and you're you're so sweet. And she she really had a blast meeting you when uh we met up in July, in uh Maryland. So it's I, it's always weird for me to hear say that she says oh she says I love Robbie. He's so sweet. I'm thinking. Have, when, when did you see Robbie? <laughs> but it's true when you when you were with us. It, I mean, you are you're awesome. You you are just a really stand up guy, a solid guy, an honest guy. Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, yeah, man, thank you for everything, and it's always a blast. And uh, likewise, it's an honor to call you a friend, and uh, it's an honor knowing you. Like like you said yesterday, I think you said that we kind of hit it off instantly. Yep. You know what I cannot say for most people. Uh, okay, I'm gonna stop. Uh, <laughs> but but. Uh, but the truth is, you've been a, a great friend, and uh, it's a, it's an absolute honor. Sandy is a sweetheart, and you know, love watching her eat. That oh, was yeah. very entertaining, <laughs> you know. And um, you know, just thank you for the support. Thank you for everything. And like I said, uh, hopefully, you know, Apollo keeps on growing. And uh, you know, I know your channel is gonna only grow because we need people like you. I if we're so. talking about if we're talking about what's best for the industry, it's somebody outspoken, somebody knowledgeable. God knows there are not many people like you. Thank you very much, Robbie. And where can everybody find you and why should they buy Apollon? They should buy Apollon because Apollon kicks ass and it's a good, good brand. And it's uh, made with love. And um, it's always transparent, just like I am. And, you know, obviously on ApollonNutrition.com, they can visit the gym. Uh, if they're your friends or they know you, they will always get special treatment, obviously. You know, but, um, you know, I'm easy to find. If somebody likes me, shoot me a message. I always answer. If you don't like me, at least say it to my face. <laughs> I appreciate the truth. Well put, Robbie. Thank you again, man, and uh, have a great day. Thank you, buddy.